My name is Rana from Curly's Clay Creation and since I've been asked by many people to do a slow version of my slab mugs, this is what I'm doing. So this is my first tutorial so bear with me if I miss anything. I will talk you through a couple hints and secrets and if you have any questions comment them and if you like the video share it. Thank you. So I already rolled out my clay and I've compressed it. I use baking silicone sheets for patterns. I actually have drawers and drawers of different forms of patterns. Have it be doilies, silicone, things I find at uh, thrift stores, at flea markets. So all I do is look for any form of texture nowadays. So. This is the one I'm using today, the one that I posted yesterday. I believe I bought this one on Amazon. So what I do is I place it down on the clay firmly so that it doesn't move when I roll it. I usually uh, impress the corner pieces for the bottoms, even if they're a little narrower. I usually use cooking spray on my cookie cutters to avoid sticking. bottoms. Make sure it's bright enough for you. Luckily, the mat that I use is pretty much the same measurement as the mugs that I usually do. I make my own templates using folder dividers because they are see-through and I can sort of see the pattern if I want to cut the sides of the mug and I need to center it with the pattern, I'd be able to see it. So these are perfect. And I'm going to be making this size today which corresponds with the cookie cutter that I just cut the bottoms with. So since these are perfect, I don't have to measure the length. So I'll just go ahead and cut these out. And I'll save this clay for something else later. Now this comes handy so I can cut the edges. And when cutting the edges, make sure you slant your knife in the same directions on both sides so it has a, a clean seam once you start building. So as you see, I'm angling the knife down to the right 
and cutting on one end and keep the knife angled in the same direction and cut the opposite end. And do the same to the other one. I like to get other things done and let these sit for a minute just to sort of stiffen up a tiny bit to be easier to work with. So while I wait for that, I score my bottoms. A lot of people thought my mugs that I posted yesterday were bottomless because it was so fast, but I swear they have bottoms. So I score. The bottoms go. and while I'm waiting I might as well make my handles and I'll show you my trick to doing handles I like to keep my table moist when I do this so that my handles don't crack from dryness. Rolling out coils. I've been doing this a minute so I know typically how thick I want my coil so every mug is different okay so what I do is I bring back my mat and I lay my coil across it And I ever so gently just roll it with a rolling pin to flatten it out a bit. And that way I have pattern on my handles. I know the video is not too bright, so better luck next time, I guess. And with this size mug, I usually cut a six and a half inch handle, which works out good for them. So I cut the ends off and go six and a half inches. And what I do is usually cut a slant on the top part of the handle and then cut the slant on the bottom part of the handle. and fake shape it. There you go. And just to save time, I'm gonna go ahead and score these for later. Okay. 
the ends that you cut slanted, go ahead and score. I'll score this one too. And apply a little bit of slip. Some people use water, some people use watery slip. I just put a tiny bit of slip on the edge of that. I'm really handling this gently, although it seems like I'm going a little rough, it's pretty gentle. And I make sure the seams are aligned. And give it a tiny bit of pressure to seal it. As you can see, there you go. Not much of a mess, not much of a smudge. And the inside is where I'm going to be, uh, let's see, smoothing out the seam. To smooth out the seam, usually I like a little bit more water, so I just spray the inside slightly. And I use my rib. Now my seam is hidden, no more seam. There you go, that's where the seam is. And if you wanna work quick, you can just go ahead and score the top as you finish. A little bit more slip. and apply the bottom. I wet my river bath just a tiny bit and I smooth, smooth the seam at the bottom just barely which is fine if it comes out a little bit messy because I still clean up my mugs once they're leather hard. Easy to handle when they're a little leather hard. So there's the base of the mug and the walls. And I usually attach the handles right at the seam to sort of Avoid too much attention to the seam. I go ahead and score. And you can wait until this is leather hard. I've never really had a problem attaching everything immediately. I keep an eye on them. I adjust them as they dry. And since my handles are already scored, all I do is hold the inside of the mug as I press firmly, softly but firmly, to attach the handles. Attach the top one first, and I make sure I support it from the back, and then attach the bottom. And then typically, to hold the round shape, I use a red solo cup. So I literally just gently align that and it's good because it sort of narrows so it'll fit perfectly any mug you make. So I just align it and I let it sit to dry shortly. And there you go, a finished mug. Handles can be adjusted to how you like and they usually hold their shape pretty good. There you go. 
And there you have it, a slab-built mug.